Welcome to Timmer's here. Now here is my throwback segment where I talk about the films that turns 10, 20, 30, and 40 this week. Alright. Well, I cannot believe this, these, you know, on this out. Turning 10 years old this week is none other than Guardians of the Galaxy. Now, of course, this was directed by James Gunn, making his debut with the MCU. Now, Guardians of the Galaxy was, let's say, pretty much... A gamble, you know, because no one knew who Guardians of the Galaxy was. Uh, James Gunn mostly had stuff like, um, at the time, you know, before he, DC fame, he had stuff like a uh, Slayer, Super, and also it was a little bit of a ga um, gamble for him, um, for him to do something like this. Uh, this, of course, got um, I, I still remember when they first announced this. I'm like, I, I didn't really know too much about Guardians of the Galaxy at first. I'm like. How are you going to do a film about, like, a talking tree, a talking raccoon? That sounds a little bit weird for the MCU there. And, of course, you had uh, Chris Pratt really making... Um, this is actually a movie, I guess, to say put Chris Pratt on the map for most people. Uh, of course, Dave Bautista, uh, Vin Diesel as Groot. Killer soundtrack. I mean, I still remember the first trailer when the... Uh, uh, the Uga Baka... Um, you know, we can't stop this feeling song being shown, or more than a feeling song uh, shown. I mean, but God of the Galaxy was terrific. I adore this film. I had such a fun time with it. You know, I believe this was actually like in the uh, second half of the MCU. I think it was the second phase of MC, if I'm not mistaken, or was it the third phase? I, I, I can't remember. To be honest with you. But God of the Galaxy was so great. You know, Chris Pratt as Star Lord. Uh, the iconic Groot scenes, um, you know, s such a great soundtrack. I just really thought this film a lot. Of course, they were going to give us two more Guardians movies. Uh, we got to see the Guardians in the Avengers, like in Endgame and stuff. So, what not you, of course, if anyone wants you, but what not you love about Guardians? Uh, you know, whether we get to see like another Guardians in the future, like uh, part four or whatever. That's where I say. Alright. Now, speaking of the MCU, by the way, um, you know, former Marvel actors, uh, also turning 10, we got Get On Up. Now, this, of course, this starred the late Chadwick Boseman as James Brown. Now, this was actually, I believe, pretty much to, you know, pretty much like, uh, you know, before he even got cast to play T'Challa in, you know, uh, in Civil War and Black Banner. Uh, now, of course, this was also around, um, this actually also came out, like, a year after Chadwick Boseman had his breakthrough role playing, uh, Jackie Robinson in 42. So, he went from playing Jackie Robinson to James Brown. You know, he, he went from playing, like, one of the most iconic baseball players of all time to playing, uh, the king, you know, uh, the king of, uh, of soul here. And Chadwick Boseman as James Brown was terrific. I if I still prefer him as like James Brown or uh, Jack Robinson, but and of course he will also play uh, Durga Masha. I used to always uh, make you know make jokes saying uh, I guess every time um, he's not you know uh, playing Black Panther, he has a thing in his contract saying uh, that you know he gotta play a, a real life person. You know, uh, and man, he was he really embodied James Brown perfectly. He's saying a lot um, perfectly, just like him. Uh, you also had some other cool cast members like Viola Davis, Octavia Spencer, uh, Olo Black was also in this, Alison Janney. It was also directed by Tate Taylor, who gave us the help. I mean, this movie is, is terrific. You know, if you guys never seen Get On Up, do yourself a favor, go watch it. I mean, Chadwick really embodied James Brown perfectly here. Alright, um... Also turning, now turning 20 this week... We got a lot of ones here. Uh, we got God of State. Now, last month I did talk about the uh, Zach Braff film, uh, Wish You Were Here. That movie actually came out like 10 years after God of State. This was actually his directorial debut. You know, this movie came out around the time that, you know, he did, uh, what you call it, um, uh, the show Scrubs. Now, if you guys don't know much about God of State, this starred the likes of Natalie Portman, Peter Sarsgaard, Ian Holm, uh, you also had um John like Jim Process in this like year, years before he did uh Big Bang Theory. If you guys don't know much about the story of this, 
Uh, it's actually based on um, Zach Braff's real life, where he plays a 26-year-old actor writer who uh, returns to his hometown in Jersey uh, after his uh, mother passes. And the chemistry between Zach Braff and Natalie Portman is really excellent in this. Uh, Zach Braff is terrific. Pierce Sosgar is great. If you guys never seen Garden State, definitely give that one a go. Alright. Also turning uh, 20. Uh, we got maybe my, one of my favorite comments of that year. Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. I just... Let me just say, I adore Harold and Kumar. Now, of course, we will go on to get two others. Uh, Escape from Quantum. Um, obey, then of course the Christmas one, but nothing beats the um the first film. Uh, Harry and Kumar, of course, starring John Show and Cal Penn, uh, who pretty much um of course plays the role of Harry and Kumar, who plays these stoners who decide to um have an adventure uh to White Castle here, and of course you had you know uh pretty much a young Ryan Reynolds. This was like before Ryan Reynolds became as you know big he was, um. Uh, you also had like Anthony Anderson popping up with this, Christopher Maloney, which if you guys really want to see an interesting role with Christopher Maloney in it, uh, like if, if you guys obviously know Christopher Maloney as Sayer from Law and Order, it is so insane. Just like he is so different in this because uh, he has like all prosthetics and uh, you would not even know that's uh, Sal uh, Saller from um, Law and Order. So, so crazy to believe. I believe this was also Mullen Ackman's first film, if I'm not mistaken, too. I mean, of course, Neil Patrick Harris was also in this. Uh, yeah, Harry Her and Kumar is just excellent. This was actually before um, Neil Patrick Harris did How I Met Your Mother, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but yeah, a lot of fun scenes. Uh, such a really fun stoner comedy. This movie actually made me love White Castles, by the way. I kid you not. Uh, uh, and of course, the chemistry between John Show and Cal Penn is great. If you guys never seen Harry and like, or any of the Harry Kumar films, and you guys want a fun laugh, do yourself a favor, go watch them. They are hilarious. Alright. Uh, also turning uh, 20, we got M. Night Shyamalan's The Village. Now, this saw the likes of Bryce Dallas Howard, Joaquin Phoenix, uh, Sigourney Weaver, and it's about a village whose population lives in fear of creatures that inhabit uh, the world that was beyond. And now, of course, this, I guess this was really the movie that really put M. I. Shyamalan down a little bit of a pack. Now, this isn't as bad as, let's say, The Happening or, you know, The Last Airbender or anything like that. But you can definitely tell that this was really the movie that really uh, put, you know, um, M. Night a little bit down and making some not-so-great stuff. Thankfully, he seems to be making a comeback. You know, he has, um, you know, Trapped this week. I cannot wait for that. Uh... Now again, the village is not as bad as as some of his other bad stuff, but still not all that great. Like it definitely big downplay from the likes of the Six Sense, Signs. Um, yeah, not really that that great. All right. Also turning twenty, we got the Maturian Candidate, which is a, a remake of the ninth of the nineteen sixty two film, uh, which had uh, Frank Sinatra in it. If I'm not mistaken. Directed by John Demi, who gave us the Sons of the Lambs, uh, starring Denzel Washington as uh, Bennett Marco, who's an uh, tenacious uh, virtual soldier. And uh, here you got, um, you know, uh, Liam Schreiber as Raymond Shaw as a, a U.S. Uh, representative from New York uh, who manipulates into uh, becoming vice president candidate. John Voight was in this. Meryl Streep. Uh, Jeffrey Wright, really decent um, remake if you guys haven't seen it. Denzel, Meryl Streep, I mean, what more can you ask for there? Alright, we also got uh, Thunderbirds, that turns um, 20, uh, which uh, starred the likes of a very young Vanessa Hudgens, Sir Ben Kingsley, the late Bill Paxton, and it's actually um, directed by John DeFrakes, who you might know as a Riker from Star Trek. Uh, and if you guys don't know much about the story here, the plot um, concerns uh, the Hood, who traps International Rescue uh, AIR leader Jeff Tracy and four of his sons on board of the damaged uh, Thunderbird 5 to steal the or um, the other Thunderbird's vehicle. Now, this is pretty much like based on the 1960s uh, TV show Thunderbirds, which is, I guess, it was technically um, was the one that really, like, uh, 
the movie um, Team America pay homage to and stuff, but yeah, this film was not all that great. I mean, uh, of course, you had Etty Edwards was in this, Bradley Corbett. It's just a terrible one. Uh, very one of the worst uh, films in 2004. Uh, not all that funny, not all that memorable, and yeah. All right. Um, last but not least, in the 20 year one, we got She Hate Me, which is directed by Spike Lee, starring Anthony Mackey, uh, who plays a man who agrees to um, impregnate his uh, ex girl, his ex fiance, played by Carrie Washington, and a slew of other uh, females uh, for money. You also had Woody Harrelson, uh, True to Edge of Fort, Monica Bellucci. Not, not, not really Spike Lee's best effort, but not a bad little film, though. Uh, and. Uh, Anthony Mackie, which I think was actually his uh, first major lead role, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, he was pretty solid in this. Uh, Kerry Washington was great. Not a bad little film there. I mean, who doesn't like Spike Lee, right? Alright, now, film turning dirty. Oh boy, maybe the best one on this list. Is one of the iconic comedies of the 90s, The Mask. Starring Jim Carrey uh, as Stanley F. Yes, who plays an ordinary man who finds a magical wooden green max uh, that transforms him into, well, the mask. Uh, and, of course, this was actually Cameron Diaz's first film, and, my God, I remember first watching... I, I was pretty much young at the time uh, when I first saw this film. I remember seeing Cameron Diaz, and... Man, maybe one of the most attractive women I've ever seen on, um, on screen. Uh... Who just doesn't love the mask? I mean, definitely the best Jim Carrey film of all time. Uh, the movie that really put him on the map. Like, 1994 was a banger year for Jim Carrey. You know, he, uh, <clears throat> you know, of course, uh, he followed up, you know, Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, The Mask. Uh, after that, he also did Dumb and Dumber. So, 94 was like, was pretty much the banger year for Jim Carrey's career. Uh, and this movie is just lo loads of fun. It's so entertaining. Jim Carrey is terrific in this. Uh, of course, um, obviously, you know, uh, Cameron Diaz is great. Uh, ben Stein was also in this. You know, I mean, the dance uh, sequence, maybe one of my favorite sequences there is. Uh, you know, seeing Jim Carrey transform into the mass is really intriguing. I mean, I highly recommend watching The Mass. I don't recommend watching Son of the Mass, but... We'll get you that next year because next year that turns twenty. So, oh boy, do your stuff here. Watch the mask. Sun the mask don't exist. All right. Um. Well, plus that uh the guy uh Peter Green um the uh um da uh Damon guy uh, I always keep forgetting the villain's name. Um. Uh, I think his his name was Demetrius, something like that. Killer villain, like when he puts on that mask. By the way, talk about a scary villain right there. All right. Uh, now there's other films that turn sturdy, like It Could Happen to You, starring Nicolas Cage, Richard Fonda, where Nick Cage plays like this police officer, uh, who's half jockey, um, uh, offers to share his winnings, um, if he happens to win the lottery. Uh, you of course got uh, Richard Fonda. Uh, Rosa Perez, Isaac Hayes, Stanley Tucci, uh, Vincent Pastor. Uh, not a bad little film there. Uh, Nicholas Cage and uh, Bridget Fonda. It's just Bridget Fonda doesn't do anything anymore. You know, remember she was in like Single White Female. Um, you know, she I, she was in Kiss of Death too. She, she was in a lot of stuff in the nineties. What are her chores beyond that? Are right, we also got Black Beauty? Uh, which is based on a very popular, um, the very popular book, which actually, uh, this is actually the uh, fifth cinematic adaptation. The last one was, um, the, uh, 2021 with, uh, Kate Winslet. Uh, this saw the likes of, uh, Sean Bean here. Uh, and if you guys don't really, uh, know much about this, obviously it's pretty much about a horse here, uh, it's pretty much uh, told as an autobiography of the horse uh, narration as a beauty leading viewers through the uh, trials of the horse's life to his own um, to his own eyes. I mean, not not a bad adaptation. Like, there's been other adaptations around there, too. Um, this is maybe one of the better ones. Uh, there was, of course, one, I believe, in, like, the 1950s and stuff. I mean, who doesn't love a good horse movie, right? All right. Now, not really... 
lot to talk about with the 40 years one. Uh, like, we do got Grandview USA, which stars Jamie Lee Curtis as the owner of a uh, Midwestern Demolition Derby, who has affairs uh, with a uh, team played by C. C. Thomas Howe and Mary Driver, played by Patrick Swayze. This was directed by Randa uh, Kleiser, who directed Grease, which Hal Killer was in here, all uh, the Grease music, and Deadpool will ring. Just want to throw a plug there. Uh, you also had, like, um, a very young Joan Cusack. Uh, speak of single white female, uh, Jennifer Jason Lee was in this. John Cusack. Uh, I don't really remember seeing this film, to be honest. Uh, not really that memorable. Uh, we also got the Philadelphia um, Experiment, uh, where which um a, which is a sci-fi film uh directed by Stuart Raphael, Raphael who directed the iconic Macame. Who remembers Macame? Come on. Um you know, it takes place in 1943. U, uh, U.S. Navy uh, sailors David um, Herdag, played by Michael Prayer, and Jim Parker, played by uh, Bobby D. Um, Kinso, are thrown forward in time um, to the year 1984 when a scientific experiment begins um, performed aboard the USS um, Eldridge. So, yeah, a little forgettable there. I mean, yeah, those are many um, great ones that chose for this. So, yeah, but. Let me leave you guys. Uh, which of these films stand at you the most? Uh, to me, the 10 year one is going to go to Gods of the Galaxy. The 20 year one is, of course, uh, Hair and Kumar go to White Castle. And the 30 year one is The Mask. Nothing really stands out with the 4 year one. Uh, I mean, not really. That um, Grand View is not really Patrick Swayze's most popular film. Like, obviously, Dirty Dancing, Ghosts. Yeah, I, I forgot he done more than that. But. Uh, let me let you, uh, again, again, um, you know, which of these films stand at you the most? Uh, drop comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell for notifications. This is Simon Simon.